We all know about tooth cavities. Many people, whether children or adults, have tooth cavities. But have you ever thought before, what are dental cavities? And why is it called cavities? And does the tooth cavity occur because of a mite or a living organism that enters inside the tooth and lives inside of it? Or are there other reasons? Hello, this is Midnight Thoughts. Before we start, if you are still new to the channel, remember to subscribe and activate the bell to receive our videos first. The one you see in the picture is the grain weevil. It's a small creature, its length is only 6 millimeters. Following the beetles or the Cleopatra class, we can see them in the old flour, the wheat, or corn. And it also appears in the dry food when it's kept for a long time. The weevil is a herbivore that lives on herbs and plants, and it's found in nature in more than 60,000 species. Thankfully, this weevil is unrelated to the tooth cavities. It's not even remotely true. When we say there's a person with tooth decay, we don't mean that this weevil or one of its relatives enters the tooth, lives inside of it, and causes problems. The link between them is that the cavities, in the two cases, means rot, corruption, or decomposition. And this is an accurate description of the decayed teeth. Still, at the end of the day, it's only just a metaphorical description. Since we're lucky enough that the weevil is not inside our mouth while it has cavities, what causes our teeth to decay and lead to this condition? Cavities occur in the teeth when a set of circumstances come together. Yes, it has nothing to do with the weevil, as we explained. But it doesn't mean that there aren't living and tiny organisms inside the teeth that help in tooth decay. These creatures are bacteria. The bacteria is present in every place around us, on our hands, on our bodies, on our clothes, at our desks, on our phones, and almost everywhere. But as long as it's at the expected levels, there's no significant harm from it. Along the same lines, the human mouth has many bacteria inside of it. Usually, none of them are particularly harmful, and they naturally coexist with our bodies. Instead, there are bacteria that are beneficial. The main thing in the whole matter is related to the food remnants. After we finish the food, whatever its components, there are small remnants on the teeth surface, whether between the teeth, in the small gap between one of the teeth, or even on the outside of the teeth if we haven't brushed our teeth before. When they see the food remaining, the bacteria in the mouth become very excited. Oh, and if this food has sugars or starches, instead of just being excited, it becomes very, very excited. The bacteria start to feed on the leftover food in the mouth. The more they provide, the more they multiply and form colonies. And not only that, they secrete a specific type of acid that dissolves the hard outer layer that protects the teeth, which is called the enamel. These acids form holes and openings in the enamel, and therefore the bacteria penetrate a new part of the teeth and form more colonies. The same process is repeated over and over again. Bacteria always multiply in places out of reach, meaning under the molars, around deep fissures, or in a far corner of the mouth. What's important is in the areas that are difficult to reach, and therefore difficult to clean. A non-stop brain. This scenario we talked about can happen to anyone at any age. Yes, the rate of occurrence varies from one person to another. This means, for example, that children's teeth get more cavities than adults, and people who eat a lot of sugar and carbohydrates have more cavities in their teeth than those who eat a healthy and balanced diet. Those who have dry mouth suffer from tooth decay more than those who don't have it. However, this whole process happens to everyone. As a matter of fact, it's currently occurring on your teeth right now. Doctors say that within 20 minutes of eating food, the bacteria and their pathogens start getting to work, feeding on the food remnants and multiplying. But as we said, their rate varies from person to person. One of the essential things to understand is that tooth decay is basically degrees or stages. For example, there's a type of cavities called superficial cavities or initial cavities. This is one of the most famous cavities ever. Many people have it. And it's basically black lines and the superficial cavities in the teeth. This type of cavities is classified as the least dangerous for two reasons. First of all, it's quickly discovered. If someone opens his mouth and looks in the mirror, he'll notice it quickly. And the second reason is that the cavity's material is away from the nerves. So the bacteria has a long way to go to reach the nerves because it's separated from the nerves by two complete layers, the enamel layer and the dentin layer. 
By the way, just because we say that this type is less dangerous does not mean that we say it's okay. We have initial cavities and that's that, no problem. We mean that it's quickly discovered and treated in the early stages. But any cavities, no matter how simple, if it persists for an extended period without being taken care of, will turn into a severe type and will spread to other teeth too. The second type is interfacial cavities, and from its name, it's clear what it does. Cavities are present between the teeth or the molars and are considered the most dangerous cavities ever. First, because this area is hidden and we don't quickly notice it. Second, because when the cavities occur, they occur in two molars, not just one. This means that the problem has doubled. Then we come to the next type, which is gingival cavities. This type occurs in the part that touches the gums, whether in the front teeth or even the back molars. And this type of cavity appears in people who drink soft drinks excessively. And this type is between easy and difficult. It's easily observed because it's in the front of the mouth. However, its treatment is slightly tricky. This is because the cavity in this area is close to the tooth nerve. Also, the filling could be stronger when the doctors fill this area. Let's ask a question. If I have superficial cavities, can they disappear when I brush my teeth well? Some people think that if they brush their teeth regularly, they will eliminate cavities. But of course, this is not true. Tooth brushing and oral care are preventative measures, not treatments for cavities. This means that we should do it before we get cavities. But even if it happens and our teeth get cavities, we should immediately go to a dentist, and he will do what needs to be done. He will clean the area of decay with the devices he has and remove the entire part that got affected, and then he'll put in some compensatory fillings. The only case where the toothbrush and the toothpaste can be beneficial with the cavities is if we happen to catch the cavities in its early days, before any decomposition, pits, or cavities occur. But as soon as cavities occur, there is no solution other than going to the doctor. Eventually, let us offer some advice. And again, this is advice for those who want to protect their teeth and not lead to any cavities. The one who has cavities already needs to visit the dentist. First of all, we should brush our teeth well every day with a toothbrush and floss to remove food remnants from between the teeth and the molars. Dental floss can reach places that a brush can't go. We can also use mouthwash or a dental rinse. And one more important thing is to scrub our tongue. A lot of people think that the tongue shouldn't be scrubbed, and this is not true. Maybe someone has bad breath because of his tongue, not his teeth. And many toothbrushes are now sold where the back of the toothbrush consists of prominent curves that can clean the tongue. And when we brush our teeth, it shouldn't be rapid. We shouldn't do it in one or two strokes and then rinse our mouth. We should brush our teeth for two to three minutes. And when we come to touch, we brush from top to bottom and right to left. On the inside of the molars, on the outside of the molars, on the inside of the teeth and on the outside of the teeth. And everything. That way, we're not leaving any part not exposed to brushing. Because if there is an inevitable part that we don't wash and are accustomed to not flushing it, there will always be problems. Speaking of toothbrushes, the Seawalk is excellent for cleaning, especially since it's natural and there are no chemicals such as toothpaste. And it keeps the mouth smell very pleasant. The second piece of advice is food. As we explained, sugars and starches are the foods that cause the most problems. That's why we should try as much as possible not to increase their intake, and if we want to eat them, we should eat them with another meal full of other stuff. I mean, if we want to eat jam, we won't go and make a jam sandwich with white bread and that's it. Put the jam in a complete meal with cheese, cucumber, fruits, salad, etc. That's to prevent the saliva and the inner environment of the mouth from turning acidic due to the sugars. However, eating a variety of foods itself cleanses the mouth. For example, suppose there's a jam residue and you eat a cucumber. In that case, the cucumber will automatically clean up the jam in the mouth. Of course, reducing acidic foods such as Pepsi, cola, manufactured juices, and all that is essential. Those things cause tooth erosion without any bacteria. This is because it brings its acids home. There's no need for you to do anything. Finally, have your teeth checked by the doctor from time to time. Just because your teeth are not hurting right now does not mean that there's no decay. And if there are any hidden cavities, treat them in the early stages before they reach the nerves and annoy you. And finally, we ask God for wellness for us and you. Here, we are done now. Who's reached this far?
For all who reach this point, you are the best. Give us a like before you leave to know how many people have reached the end. And don't forget, if a question comes to your mind in the middle of the night that confuses you, write it for us in the video's comments so we can answer it for you. Most of the episodes we make now are taken from the comments. Bye.